Hey, welcome to White Cap Regatta Reports, Pan Am Games Trials, Lightning Canadian Championships. I'd like to welcome Jessica Hirschbold and Rachel Green. Thank you. Nice. <laughs> um, so, so you guys uh, won the, the Lightning Canadians uh, out in at Kitsilano, right? Tell me yeah. how the crew came together because I think it's fairly interesting, right? Um, well, I can start on my end, but um, my friend and another person on the podcast, Galen Richardson, was um, at Sail GP Chicago and ran into Luke's wife, Annie, and they were talking about lightnings. And Galen mentioned my name that I've sold lightnings before. So a few days later, I got a call from Luke asking if I'd be interested to come out and, you know, try to see how we do with the regatta and if we wanted to do the Pan Am Games. Um, and at first I was like, yeah, but then it was really fun. Um, so, so wait, be... you just got to, you, you, you were hanging out at Chicago Sail GP uh, and you saw Galen. And then a couple of days later, uh, two-time Olympian Luke Ramsey calls and says, hey, do you want to go <laughs> to the Pan Am Games with me? I mean, possibly? Yes, it, like, exactly. So Galen was the one in Chicago um, and did all the connecting. And funny enough, before he went to Chicago, I was talking to him about Pan Am qualifiers. Um, oh, okay. And so that kind of like, I guess that was in his mind as well. So, but it was a big like chain reaction. And what about you, Jessica? How did you join this um, sh ship? So I guess he was looking for like female crews and then he was just talking to some people at Royal Van. And then one of my old, like, um, he was my 29er coach, but he's just one of the coaches I knew at Royal Van, just kind of threw my name out there. And then I just got an email I had to Google what a lightning was. Cause I've never <laughs> heard of it before. I don't think I've ever seen one on the West coast. <laughs> so I looked it up. Found out it was like a three-person vote, and I'm like, you know what? That sounds like a lot of fun. Yeah. Um, what was it like? Like, it's a fit boat, right? You guys had to hike and everything. Like, it's it's that kind of boat, right? Was it? Was yeah. it? You know, did you have to? Obviously, you didn't have enough time to like build a fitness program or anything. But was it was it uh, challenging on that level? Um, for me personally, I like for skiff sailing. I always. I'm actually really passionate about like fitness in the gym. So like, that's just part of my lifestyle. I just really like going to the gym. So hiking was definitely something different for me because I'm used to trefusing and, but the fitness that was pretty, came pretty easily for me. Okay. Yeah. What about you, Rachel? Same, same you had goes. experience in lightnings, right? Yes. And I think the funniest thing is how everyone like, Jessica and um, Luke, when they're stepping in the boat, they're like, oh, these hiking straps are just so weird because they go <laughs> really? the other direction than normal ones. <laughs> oh, explain that to me. I might yeah, not be able so to figure like, it out. You like wrap your ankles mainly around um, the strap um, and we all get our own. Oh, it's going, oh, oh. Like it's, yeah. <laughs> it's like perpendicular from the side of the boat. I was oh. like, I looked at it, I'm like, is that the hiking strap? Like, mm -hmm. are we supposed to, like, hike diagonally? Just kind of loop your ankles around, like uh, Rachel said, which is yeah, kind of weird. Yeah, like they're, like, crisscross. Uh, oh, oh, yeah. oh, oh, okay, okay. Yeah. Interesting. Wow. Yeah, okay. a lot. But then, so, Rachel, you, you, you had been to uh, Lightning, you said World Youth Lightning Championships, so you had, like, way more Lightning experience than these guys did. A little bit, but I think like all the fine tuning and kind of like figuring it out was like a group process. Um, and I mean, the fleet is so nice. So we were always calling like big names in the lightning act class and they were providing us with so much information. So it was a lot of trial and error to figure out a lot of things yeah. though on the boat. Or the like crew. The... Sorry, go ahead, Rick. Go ahead. Even like the day before. Uh, we were, I was like the day before we were out training and we were training with this one other boat and we felt really, really slow. And then we just found out like a few more things about like the rig, um, in the backstay and we changed a few things about our tension. And then literally like the next day we were so much faster, just like talking to the other boats and like, I, I don't know if we didn't get that tip, I don't think we would have done as well as we did. Cause as soon as our boat was finally like, it wasn't tuned out like as perfect i guess as the lightning could be but it was just like like we felt as fast as the 700 pound boat could go 
Oh, yeah, <laughs> it was yeah. kind of fun. Wow. Um, so that, I guess that's the next question. What was the fleet like? How did they take to having you, you know, you guys and Luke and, you know, jumping in at the last minute? It was, it, it was really fun. Um, we had some people come from Thunder Bay, I'm pretty sure. So they came a huge distance um, and they're really phenomenal lightning sailors. So it was really fun to like hear all their thoughts and see them on the water. Uh, but we were really competitive. I mean, like Luke's local knowledge was so helpful too. Um, but everyone is just so nice in the fleet. Like we were practicing with our practice sales, which are really, really old and used. Um, and people were like, do you need us to get you new sales before the weekend? Like, we're like, oh no, we got that covered. But they were just like so willing to help us out to try and do as well as possible. Oh, that's so cool. Jessica, then what, what, give me an example of that um, local knowledge. Like, did he know which side of course to go to and stuff? He just like knew the regular, like current patterns of English Bay. Uh, English Bay, I feel like is very like routine. So if like something's going to happen, it's like the same thing every time. Like all the times I've raced there, it's been like very specific to each wind direction and there's not like a lot of change. So each had like a lot of experience with the area because it's a very... I guess it's it's just very niche. Like if something, like if it's a certain wind direction, you just only need to go one way. It never really changes that much in English Bay. It's very recipe-like sailing almost. And what was the regatta like in terms of conditions and everything, Rachel? Um, it was quite light, which was funny because the week that we were practicing before, we had some pretty heavy winds. Um, and of course, when it got to the weekend, it was exactly what we didn't practice in. Um, right. so yeah, on, I forget whether it was Saturday or Sunday, we had to wait like an hour and we were just bobbing, eventually paddled yeah. in. Like it was oh. so light. Um, but I mean, we made it work. It was well. <laughs> yeah. The training cool. days were really fun. It was actually was so windy when we jived since our boat was so old. We jived on one windy day, and then all the rivets on our boom attaching the gooseneck to the mast just sheared off, and our boom oh my just God. popped off. And then at the same <laughs> yeah. time, the little um, hook for like where the jib goes, that also all the rivets just sheared off. And we're like, well, I guess we have to go in <laughs> without a boom. So like six rivets just blew up. Yeah, but Maybe. it was just a jibe, just sails loaded, and then bam. Boom, gone. Well, it, it's always good that it happens in training, right? Yeah. Um, yeah, did, exactly. Yeah. Do you guys have any feelings about um, mixed sailing? Explain to me what the class rules are for, for uh, Lightnings and Pan Ams. Yeah, so for the Pan Am games, I since there were three people in the boat, two had to be female and one would have to be male. Um, so, I, I mean, I think it's a good effort to make um, more of a push towards encouraging women in sailing. Uh, but I think it still is certainly difficult to find that volume of female sailors at times. Um, yeah. Just because right. of, I guess, historical things like that. And is that is that just for Pan Ams, the two and one, or is that the Lightning class in general? Yeah, that's just for the Pan Am games. Okay, okay. Interesting. Mm -hmm. um, so, and the, so Jessica, while well, you told me earlier that you're, heading into possibly doing a 470 uh yeah. campaign and that's a mixed crew do you have any feelings about you know yeah just about that that in general um well yeah it's i've always um i've done all my double-handed sailing in like the 29er with like a female skipper so it was just recently that i started sailing with a male skipper and it is it's fun to see like all all the different roles because in the 470 we've been looking at a whole bunch of different boats and like everyone so there's a lot of female crews but then there's also a lot of female skippers and just seeing everyone do everything because like i think it's almost fun to set sail in a fleet with like everybody and not just the females or just the males so i think having the mix you kind of get like a big mix of skill level because there's not usually like i think whenever we sailed in the 29er there was only like three double female boats so it was always a lot more fun to sail in like the big fleet so i think you get like a fun mix of people definitely when you do that yeah, yeah. i i agree and i to me because i've had a lot of people on the podcast about this and 
Um, I think what you said, Rachel, was really great in terms of like not having a volume, right? So there's just not enough. And I just know for double-handed boats, just in general, people have a hard time finding partners anyway. But mm -hmm. then if you have to then find someone you're compatible with that's in your town that you know that sails your boat, and then they also have to be a separate you know uh, gender, then that kind of makes it harder sometimes, yeah. right? Mm -hmm. So that's it. So to me, there's three things like that. What you said, like about having mixed crews, female crews, male crews, whatever, all sailing at the same time is so cool. Like that's one of the best things about our sport, especially, especially for about like a 420 or a 470 where there's no yeah. like strength is not that huge a deal. Like there's no, there's no, um, separating the genders. Right. So I think that's great if yeah. we all, and then also the, on the Ilka six, um, you know, uh, like Cork is a is a mixed regatta for Ilka Six, right? But then the Worlds and Europeans and stuff they split it out. So, I just think it's a really yeah. cool thing that we can compete, unlike a lot of sports. Um, you know, yeah. in mixed genders. Mm -hmm. Even in the so, in the twenty nine er at like Worlds yeah, and Europeans, yeah. they do like they do have the separate scores, but they still you everyone gets to race with everybody, and it's always more fun in like a bigger fleet. So I think whenever you get a chance to like mix everybody, it like makes a lot more fun i think mm -hmm. so but then at the same time we do you know as a sport it's it's certainly it's not there's not enough women sailing right or we we'd, we'd like to encourage more women to sail um so there's that yeah. i guess that's the totally. um, the other side of it um yeah so sure. and then do you guys have any thoughts i guess jessica since you only had to look up what a lightning was before the regatta do you have any thoughts about the lightning and how what it's uh, connection to the Pan Am games and just some of the other classes, um, like sunfish, um, like snipes that are connected to the Pan Am games that are not connected to the Olympics. Do you guys have any thoughts about, you know, if, what you think about that? Um, I guess it, it gives, like, it's kind of cool that they have like a bigger variety. I, I guess it's, they're more popular, like in South America and all, all there, because like a lot of people that competitively sail it, might not get a chance to like well they don't get a chance to go to the olympics so it's cool that they have like a big scale games event because the games is like a super fun event to go to so i think that's like super exciting for to see like a whole bunch of new groups of sailors out there super fun mm -hmm. yeah yeah what do you think rachel because you have sailed lightnings before yeah yeah i think it's really awesome um i mean i know a lot of people in the fleet who are they've won worlds and they've gone to the pan Am games and it's just really cool to see like such talent in one place you know it's going to be such a competitive fleet i think and we'll learn a lot no matter what happens out there so i think it's just a good opportunity to have um so i'm not mad about it <laughs> yeah no i think it's great and i think like sunfish they get clowned a bit in canada because <laughs> they're <laughs> like they look weird and they don't have you know they don't really have out halls or cunninghams or anything um, yeah. but they're super popular and super accessible boats and, you know, uh, such a competitive fleet in South and Central America, same as Snipes. So a, yeah. who were the, who do you guys know who the favorites are like for this regatta? You, are you guys? I know that the boat, <laughs> totally yeah. us, watch I'm your back. for us, personally, <laughs> if I had to choose. Yeah. Yeah. Um. Um, I do know, I've heard uh, really good things about the boat coming from Chile and from the States. So um, definitely got to keep an eye on them. Cool. Um, and then, so yeah, just, you know, best of luck for you guys. Thanks guys very much That's uh, awesome. for coming on. Thank you so much. Part two, skipper Luke Ramsey, who wasn't able to make our interview with Rachel and Jessica. Luke, welcome to the podcast. Hey, thanks for having me. Um, so you're a two-time silver medalist at the Pan Am Games in the Sunfish class after Chase and after chasing Lee Parkhill all over North America looking for a third medical, medal in the Sunfish. He won the trials on a tiebreaker. And then what happened? Um, yeah, I was, uh, uh, I was pretty bummed, to be honest, not to qualify. Uh, I mean, Lee sailed. He sailed great. He's a great sailor. And so it wasn't like it, it was... Um, not going like in the realm of not going to happen, but I was I was pretty disappointed, especially losing on a tiebreaker, and I felt I didn't sail very well that week. Um, the second day, I thought I sailed 
pretty well in the wind, keeping up and, and making it really tight. But the first day I just made some big mistakes and, um, and, uh, I, you know, I'd also the last two Pan Ams losing the gold medal in the last race was really tough in, uh, in Toronto. Uh, I was leading the regatta and I went, uh, I, I think I was over the line early or I was over the line early and I went back and, um, clawed back through the fleet, but wasn't able to. So that um, was a definite, that was just an individual recall. You knew it was it just an individual back. recall. Yeah. Um, flag went up and I thought, you know, I'd rather hold on to a medal. And I was like, I had the most punch start. And so I figured it was me. So I looped back around. Um, I was obviously in last and I, I came back to within, uh, one spot of getting, regaining the lead, but I just didn't do it. And then in, uh, in chill or, in Lima, um, I was in second, but I had to just put one boat between me and the other guy. And he was a good sailor. He, he, um, who was he that? Well in that race. And so it, I wasn't able to, um, to, to do it. So getting second in both, um, really made me hungry to try and win in, um, in Chile. And it was a bummer not to qualify. <laughs> so I was pretty bummed. How did you um, get up? To, how did you get up to speed so quickly in the Sunfish in 2015 when you're in the middle of a NACRA campaign? Yeah, uh, that's a great question. Um, <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> I uh, I guess most people won't want to hear this, but I uh, I sailed the trials and I got like an hour of training before the trials didn't sail well at the trials. I was like fifth or sixth, but enough to get a Canadian a spot and, or no, Canada already had a spot. Cause it was in Toronto enough to get qualify myself. I think Maddie Maru, uh, with laser sailor, he was there as well. Uh, there might've been one or two others. Um, and then, uh, I did like a couple of tuning things, uh, like tune ups, uh, boring a boat in Miami when I was uh -huh. living there. But then, uh, Coming from the world, I, uh, sorry, I was coming from the Knacker world. So I flew directly from, I think it was Sweden to Toronto and I arrived the day before <laughs> and the Canadian team had to check in my boat and whatever, do the whole thing. And so I kind of showed up and the boat was like, essentially, um, exactly as they had given it to me and I had no training. So I just <laughs> went out on the first day of the race and I won the first race. Um, <laughs> And I think I, I, I don't know, I just something about the feel just jived with me. Um, Connor Bluen, who was kind of like, quote unquote, my training partner, we always tune up. He's very open about everything. Uh -huh. um, not that it's overly complicated. Um, you know, you're really just trying to balance your helm with moving your gooseneck around. Um, but I think sailing 470s gives you a feel that is very helpful for the sunfish. Oh, wow. And that the boat likes to be sailed if you can sail it really accurately, it likes to be sailed very flat, um, which gives you a more neutral helm. And um, that's very similar to a 470 upwind. And then downwind, it's kind of similar to a laser, especially when you get a bit of waves. And so having both of those backgrounds, I think it just jived with um, my able to sail the boat. And so, um, yeah. I don't Would you say, idea. like you were, you were saying about how, how it needs to be sailed, so were you suggesting it's like you need to sail it flatter than than a laser? Um, uh, yeah. In a way? Um, mm, I wouldn't say flatter than a laser. I mean, look, they all kind of depend on the condition, right? So if you've got like a lumpy chop, um, sometimes the way I think about it is the flatter the boat, the more balanced it is, but the finer the groove. So you're going to have uh, yes. a really fine groove. And so if you're chasing your groove all over the place and you're trying to look around, you're going to be steering a lot. You're going to be losing your lane. Um, but if you're, if the, if it's like flat water and it's not too, like the puffs aren't too aggressive, um, you know, like when you get those really cold puffs and they knock you over, if they're kind of more gentle and like in Toronto is warm, gentle breeze, um, if you sail the boat like really flat, you can keep a fine groove. Like you're you're going fast, but you can keep that fine groove and look around and do all those things. And so, um, yeah, there's kind of a balance. Like there's like all boats, you know. There's there's modes that work, um, but then they won't work the next day. 
and right, right. Just because of the conditions, right? And so um, you you just have to kind of identify what that is. And I think that's maybe at times why people get so elated on one day how they've discovered how to you know beat everybody, and then the next day they just get smoked. It's, <laughs> conditions change, and and it's you know sometimes you don't recognize it, so it's hard. That's um, the beauty of our sport, though, right? Is yeah. That, uh, yeah. The next day, you For never sure. know. But I guess to go back to your original question, so um, I was uh, so after the Sunfish Trials, um, you know, Lee and I left on pretty good foot. We're great friends, and he sailed he sailed well, and he's going to do great. Um, and that you know they've left me with a little bit of um, solace. But I was online looking at okay, who else is on the team? You know, kind of I guess feeling sorry for myself. And I looked <laughs> and I saw that. Um, you know, all the boats that had qualified, but there was nobody who had, who had qualified yet for the Lightning. I don't know anything about the Lightning, or I didn't at the time. Um, and their Canadian Open, which was the Nationals, was in Vancouver. And uh, it was in like three weeks or something. And so I thought, oh, well, you know, I could probably hop in and give it a go. I didn't think we'd qualify. Um, but uh, I thought it would at least be fun to race. And so um, it was just by doing that. And then um, I texted uh, Kevin Black, who was my uh, youth sailing coach, one of my youth sailing coaches. Uh, he's a BC sailing coach, still sails or coaches actively at Royal Van. And uh, he connected me with Jessica, who um, he coached at the Youth Worlds as well. Or I don't know if he coached at the Youth Worlds, but he coached her. She went to the Youth Worlds, 29er sailor. Um, and uh, my wife, Annie Hager, was um, doing some stuff with the Canadian Sail GP team. And she was in Chicago when they were racing there. And uh, she met Galen, who sails in Acro 17. He's been he's on a, the podcast. Oh, he's been on the podcast. Nice. Yeah. yeah. Um, awesome. So everyone will be familiar. And uh, <laughs> he, so he was part of the tech crew there. And I think he was doing some wasp sailing. Um, and... Uh, he said, yeah, the girl that I uh, sailed with in college is, is a lightning sailor. And so I got Rachel's number from my wife just texted to me, said, hey, you should look this girl up. And this was still the time when I wasn't sure if we were actually going to do it because I was, you know, trying to figure out the logistics. And I texted her and she said, yeah, that sounds great. No problem. I'll fly out. Just let me know. Wow. Um, and so it was, uh, it actually was pretty easy. You know, the class, um, is so nice, so inviting. Everybody there um, really, you know, welcomed me and welcomed us in and helped us with uh, finding a boat and um, doing the tuning and um, getting sales. Like, you know, there was a lot of different people involved, but they were all, everyone was super helpful, super open. Um, and I think you see this across a lot of classes is people just want to have more people involved in their class. Right. And so, right. Um, there, there's almost never a threat and you can ask almost anybody, any question and they'll answer you. Um, and it's just, you know, being, um, I guess brave enough or diligent enough to ask those questions and really like press that. Um, and so, yeah, we got a boat and, um, we did a couple of days of training, but nothing really that helped us. Um, except for the last day of sailing, we went out with Richard Walsh, who's is a good lightning sailor. And he gave us one tip before the race that was, you know, you want your lowers just dancing. And that was like the, all of a sudden when we started focusing on that, it helped like click in some things that we'd been doing with speed. And then we hadn't really lined up with anybody other than him in like a shifty, shifty breeze uh -huh. uh, until the first race. And we started the first race we had, and we were fast. And I was like, oh, this is great. You know, we, <laughs> we could actually win this thing. Um, cause usually, I mean, you've probably hopped in other classes. I'm sure everybody has this experience. Usually your first regatta or two, you get humbled. Right. Yeah. Like, oh, I'm a great sailor. I'm going to figure this thing out, blah, blah, blah. You show up and you just get smoked. <laughs> and so that was 100% what I was expecting is just to be fighting it out in the back, you know, not being the boat, not feeling right, whatever. But, um, yeah, I guess we just got, you know, I was able to figure things out a little bit. Um, the girls sailed great. Um, and we were able to find the speed, which is, you know, if you can find the speed, it's then you're just playing a game like you would play any other any other sailboat race. You would think, like, from the outside looking in, that 
that uh, a fleet that has you know a certain number of people that race it all all the time that if somebody came in at the last minute like couldn't been more last minute I guess for you uh, and then uh, you know won the event you you might think from the outside looking in that the fleet would be unhappy with that uh yeah maybe that's the case uh <laughs> i mean but the... like it, it's not what it seemed like um i think you know like i it's hard to describe how helpful everybody was i mean like just, just to start with getting a boat right i emailed the fleet i mean what i ended up doing because i didn't know anything about the boat was i just looked up all the fleets around the west um, and I, and I started looking at listings of boats and then I emailed the fleet captains of every fleet and I said, Hey, you know, we want to do this regatta. Can we find a boat? Blah, blah, blah. I got almost everybody replied. Um, and almost everybody offered boats and, wow. um, but most of them were like so far away and logistics. I got two kids now trying to figure out how to trailer it. But Kit's Yacht Club that was hosting it said, yeah, we have this boat, you know, it's, uh, we use it for, uh, like, uh, junior sail, like teach people how to sail. Uh, it's not in awesome, it's in decent shape, but it's a little bit older. And the boat was 40 years old. <laughs> <laughs> and so um, we, I ended up putting a lot of work into that boat um, in terms of just like setting it up and replacing lines and, and getting it all tuned up. And in some ways that was the best because uh, you, um, you learn, like, obviously there's a lot of tuning in the lightning and, um, I was able to connect with Larry McDonald Jr. And, um, David, uh, <clears throat> sorry, uh, like all the North sales guys. And they were able to just like, uh, I guess, get me up to speed in terms of how the tuning guide works, but the tuning guide didn't really work because it was an older boat and it wasn't built the same. So the mast step was in a different spot and the partners are in a different spot and the chain plates are different. And so by going through and trying to tune it like you would tune the new boats, you learn, oh, okay, you know, you need to move it like this and I need to change this, um, like change how I'm blocking it at the partners and change where my mast spot position is relative to the tuning guide to get the sail shape that I want. Um, and so I ended up going through all these iterations, asking people, learning, um, and everyone was super open. And so we learned a lot. And I think, right. um, you know, we got a few days of sailing and we like beat the crap out of the boat. We ripped the boom off one day. <laughs> uh, we were sailing like 20 knots and, um, it was, it was quite, um, it was, it was a lot of fun, but that's uh, cool. Yeah. Uh, but to go back, I guess, yeah, I didn't, you know, I thought that everyone was super friendly and maybe as the weekend went on, they were offering less tips, but I think <laughs> that's, that's natural, right? Once you get into a regatta, yeah. um, you're, you're a little bit more focused and, and I think everyone's still super nice, super open. It's, it's a great class. That's cool. Now I, I just, there are two examples, historical examples that I can think of. And one is in 1984, back when, when the trials for Olympics was just one event, right? Um, and I only know this because I'm from New Brunswick and we had this really strong uh, laser sailor named Steve Fleckenstein. And he was uh, campaigning in stars that year in 1984. And uh, he was going to be the top guy, but the Finn uh, trials were first. And Larry Lemieux lost out to Terry Nielsen. So he hopped in the star at the very last minute and right. beat Steve to go to the Olympics in 84. I mean, Larry Lemieux is a, is a legend, right? Yeah. But uh, as a New Brunswicker, that, you know, that wasn't the best thing for me as a, yeah. as a fan. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, yeah, yeah, I know. There can be, um, yeah. You know, sometimes you feel bad about it a little bit, but um, sometimes that's just sailboat racing, you know. You, everyone's got to earn their stripes. Yep, Yeah. yep. Yeah. You want the best boat there. Everyone, that's what all the people that I've spoken to here that are like Canadians that are, you know, like the the two women team for 49er FX, I've had them both on and they're both like, hey, we just want the best boat to go and we want to push each other. Yeah, totally. Wow, they're, they're both great teams. Yeah. Um. Well, anyway, Luke, thank you very much for the regatta report uh, and uh, best of luck in uh, Santiago. Thanks.